Okay, so for math warm up today, we just have three problems. I want you to figure out a common denominator for these two fractions that you're given for each one of these and think about what strategy did you use to come up with said denominator. So pause your video and do those three problems for me right now. Okay, for the first one, um, there's a couple of different ways you could go about it. You could look at those denominators and ask yourself, do they have a multiple that's in common for these two fractions right here? And they do. That would be 8. So you could easily take 3 fourths and change it to 6 eighths. And then, of course, then you'd have 5 eighths already with a denominator of 8. The other option would be to multiply said denominator. So you would multiply your 4 and your 8 come up with a common denominator of 32, which would give you 24 30 seconds for 3 fourths and 20 30 seconds for 5 eighths. For our second one, not so easy, right? When we look at our denominator 4 and 5, we don't have a multiple in common. So my next thought was, well, I'm just going to multiply them. So 20 would become our common denominator. So 3 fourths would equal 15 twentieths, 3 fifths would equal 12 twentieths. And our last one kind of works the same way. Our denominators originally are a 7 and a 9. They don't have any multiples in common. So you could multiply 7 times 9, get a common denominator of 63, and 5 sevenths becomes 45 sixty thirds and 11 ninths becomes 77 60 thirds. So our lesson today is all about line plots. The reason we are learning about line plots today is because you need to be able to interpret and organize data. You need to also be able to make sense of data and answer questions about it. And how we're going to do that is create a line plot and we're gonna use our knowledge of fractions to solve problems about the data. So let's get started with creating a line plot. So here on this side, we have what's called a data set. And over here, we kind of have an outline of what a line plot is going to look like. Now this data set is going to be pencil lengths. So I didn't tell you that at the beginning, but we're going to tell you that now. So all of those numbers are going to represent how long uh, pencils are in this data set. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to come up with a title. And that's one of the requirements for a line plot is you have to have a title. So at the very top on this line, I'm just going to make my title pencil lengths. And then we're going to need to set up our numbers using that number line. And you'll notice that number line is pretty large and we have a lot of tick marks in it. So how do I know how to set that up? And also, what unit are those numbers in? And so another thing I didn't tell you was those numbers represent inches. So we're going to use that as our label here. And then you're going to have to figure out where to place the numbers on the number line. So when we look at the data set, we first need to find what's the lowest value that we have. So as we look through the data set, I'm looking for the smallest or the lowest number. And it appears that two and one half is the smallest number. My largest number appears to be seven and one fourth. So we have to look at these tick marks and figure out a good way to set out those numbers. 
So we could start with two and one half, but then sometimes we might start to set it up and start putting our numbers in and realize that maybe we don't have enough spaces or we didn't lay it out well enough. So sometimes you might want to think about that before you start writing your numbers or at least make sure that you're using a pencil in case you have to start over. Now, due to the fact that I could not write uh, very small with the stylus, I had to kind of turn my numbers sideways to give you an idea of how we might set this up. So I know the numbers are a little bit difficult to read, but this is two and one half. This would be two and three fourths and then three, and then I kind of did not write the numbers in between because I didn't have enough uh, space to write them. So. Then what we would go about doing is we would actually come up here and look at the data set and plot the data. So as I plot my data, I like to cross off the numbers as I use them just to be sure that I have placed them all in the right location. So I'm going to go ahead and start that now. So we have a five. So we're gonna place an X above the five spot and I'm gonna mark that out. Then we have a two and one half, a two and one half. So watch what happens when we have more than one. Six, a five, a five, and a five. I think that's what that says. My tools are covering that up once again, but one, two, three. And I can't cross it out because, once again, my tools are covering that up, so I can't mark it off. So pretend it's marked off. And we've got a four, a four. So we're gonna cross those out. A seven and one fourth. So look in between the seven here, I've got a tick mark and then a seven and a half. So that means seven and one fourth is gonna be here. A seven, a seven and one fourth, a five again, a five and three fourths, so that's gonna be here, four and three fourths, a five and one fourth, in a five and one fourth. Okay, so this is what a line plot would look like with your X's representing your data points. And now we're gonna take a look at the questions down below. So the number one, the largest value in the data set is. So the fact that we have all of these data points plotted now in the line plot, we can very easily run our eyes down here to see, okay, what was my largest number? My largest number was seven and one fourth. So then we can quickly answer that question. And then we're gonna take a look at number two. The smallest value in the data set is, so again, we're gonna go down to the smallest value. Looks like two and one half. And then we're gonna to go to question three. A good number for the line plot to begin with is, and we kind of already did that, so we started with two and one half. And I kind of already talked about that. A good number for the line plot to end with is, I ended it with nine. And we measured each pencil to the nearest, and, and these are to the nearest one fourth of an inch so we could label the number line with one fourth inches. And then we could go about answering uh, questions like, um, what was the most common length for pencil lengths? And we could look at that data and we could very quickly say, okay, five inches, that one had the most X's or the most data points with five. Um, what was the least amount or length of a pencil was two and a half. 
But if we were asking um, how many people had one or less, right, or one, only one, we would say seven was the only one that had seven. So there's different kinds of questions that you could answer with these kinds of line plots. Sometimes you might be asked questions where you would have to subtract, for example, the um, largest value versus the smallest value. So you might have to take seven and one fourth minus two and one half. Um, you might have to at some point add all of these together and come up with a response. So it just depends on the question, but the line plot itself is very handy in organizing the data and you can see how many data points are in each section very easily. All right, to summarize our lesson today, we have learned that data can be organized into a line plot using X's to show how often each value appears. The data that is plotted is called a data set. We can solve problems using data from a line plot. Doesn't that make you happy? <laughs> happy as a unicorn, right? Okay, guys, good job. See you in class.